good evening everybody today is going to be candle making day so it is in the evening but I'd already started prepping some of my stone candle jars a little while ago so I will show you this is what they look like I have all different sort of colors and I'll show you a few of the colors um, today as well so you can do plain colors or you can do the swirled marble this is a plainer kind of color um, but there's so many that you can do and I'm going to show you um, you know what I'm up to so this is the material I'm using is actually called hydrostone um, and it's basically it's uh you know so you've got your powder and then your water you must use distilled water or else you get little specks and dots on it um, and then basically they will actually look beautiful so like I said it's just a two-part mix uh, mix it all together leave it in the mold you take it out once I don't know a couple hours and um, then you know leave it to cure for a few days and then once that's all done uh, you seal them all up so that's as simple as that you know I've made it look simple haven't I but anyway I'm going to show you I'm going to show you what I'm up to um, I'll show you a few sealants that I'm using you don't need to use these and definitely test them uh, for yourself one of them I love for the outside of the jars but uh, I don't think it's good enough for the inside so I use a different one for the inside but anyway we're going to get going and I'll show you how I actually do my testing as well and I've already got some jars in front of me so we will go through that I'll show you how I do it and look we're going to be honest here you have to waste a jar that's the honest truth because you do need to test it but you'll be able to scrape the contents out later on and then you can probably reuse the jar to test something else but like I said let's get going and um, I'll show you what I'm up to now this is my huge production line so it is a really big production line so you can see all of the jars here so basically I've already started sealing them and if you can see my notes that sit here basically it's telling me that the purple one's lavender and so on so these are all the different jars um, you don't have to have as many as me but uh, I've been planning on bringing these out for a while and now that I'm going to be doing lots of festivals and events um, you know I need lots of them so anyway that's what I'm up to at the moment so hopefully you love that so let's just get the rest of the jars we're going to try some wax and I'm going to show you exactly how I actually do them so in front of me here you can see that I do already have my jars so these ones are dry they've been sitting here for a day or so dry now on this side here which I'll grab this so that I can show you now if you can see here these are all testers so I can just sit them on top of these ones I think I'll just move that big one out the way so it sits neatly so basically on here what you can see that I've got so this one's watermelon and summer fruit and I've just written it on here because obviously I'm not keeping this jar and ones that like I really didn't like this color so I thought look I'll just use that jar um, and just write a name on because I really didn't like the jar and these are my new range so and then these are going to stay probably for two years I'm thinking and I'll bring one or two in or out I'll change them around a little bit but anyway so that's what I've got for these I do have this size and I also do have this one this one here I'm actually um, working with Lee molds at the moment and they're actually making me a silicon mold that will have my name imprinted on it so when I pour all of um, uh, you know this particular powder and water like the substance together it will come out with my name but they're still working on that for me so I'm very very excited so um, if you're looking at custom molds please go over there they're absolutely amazing uh, they've been a lovely company to work for um, tell them I sent you over there and I'm sure they will help you out uh, you can tell them I've seen them um, you know that you see me on YouTube so I'm sure like I said they will help you out but anyway I will definitely show you when I'm doing that they're making me a really big custom made one they don't usually do but they're making me that one and one of these so that's very very exciting I'm really looking forward to um, getting those so one of them will be 400 I know one will be 500 grams um, it will hold and then this one here holds about 200 grams so now the thing with testing is what you want to do there's no good like what I could do the cheaters way is I literally could add the fragrance and literally just pour white ones in here but if I'm going to for instance with this coconut berry if I want this to have like a pinky kind of color or something like that in this particular one it's more important that you use the wax you use the color you also use the fragrance um, it's better to do that and pour that in uh, there's no good if 
you know if you leave the color out or something like that because that might alter the end result so like I said you need to add everything in you need so I've got my um little wax um on the burner at the moment and I'm trialing a new wax which I think is called m12 um which is called an ultimate soy blend and so far it has been amazing um this is one of my tests obviously this one's not good because it hasn't gone to the edge but you can see how smooth it is after the burn which I really like um, and the thing is I love soy like we all do but honestly I'm sick and tired of the natural totally natural product without any additives um, because it just doesn't hold up you know you need to basically make it and sell it and I sell wholesale so sometimes my candles may sit on a shelf for three or four months um, in someone's shop so it's really important that the um, candle holds up and one thing I did notice in my research is most of the really expensive candles do have an additive in them whether it's um, a paraffin whether it's something else uh, I don't know it just has lots of different things anyway and usually that percentage might only be two or three percent um, and the rest is actually natural soy but so that's something I thought I would um, talk about. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to get the wax. I'm going to literally just do a tiny bit, which will fill one of these because these ones um, are about 90 grams. Uh, so I'm just going to fill these. There's no good filling only this much because we want to see how it's going to burn, how long it's going to burn and all of that. And I'm going to keep records of every single one. Uh, I actually make my own sheets up. Um, I will actually provide everyone on my Patreon, no matter what member you're on, um, what tier, sorry, you're on, I will actually give you my sheet for free on there um, that I've designed myself. And it's just a really easy one um, with candles just to sort of, you know, keep your eye on how it's all going. So anyway, I'll send that over on Patreon um, and that will come out the same time that this video comes out because they do get the videos earlier. But like I said, we're going to get the wax and um, let's get going with that wax and um, we're going to do some tests. Now this is actually the wax I'm using. Now it does not come in pellet forms, it comes in a hard form. It's really hard, you need something like this to get it out. Uh, you do have to dig it out, it's a little bit more painful than the ones with the pellets but so far uh, I'm really really loving it. I did get it from Luxury Candle Supplies uh, so I will let you know how I'm going to go with this one but so far so good. I'm very excited with this one and um, we will see how it's going to go. So let's go and check out my little burner or my melter I should say say and um, we will see how it is. So this is how I actually melt all of mine. I've said this a few times. So this is actually a slow cooker and they're just in here. So you can see it is melted totally down now. I will actually check the temperature. This one likes to be a little bit hotter. Um, and um, once that's all good, then of course we are going to just start to pour it into the little um, jars that you've seen. I will not be putting a wick in first. Uh, we're going to be doing testing wicks and I'll show you how I actually do that. Um, as we go along and of course we don't want to test it uh, you know today because it's going to be too hot you know you might want to leave it a couple days maybe you might want to test one on one day and then uh, maybe you want to test a different one a few days later it's up to you however you do your testing but this is going to give us an idea whether this wick is even good um, generally there's a few that I use I do get my wicks from pure candle supplies I'll show you the ones I'm using but of course um, you do need to check because even though it's the same jar some may need to go up several sizes and some may need to come down so you just don't know anyway I'm going to pour some of this into a jar and let's get started so on my scale here that you can see I've got everything ready now the first one we're going to do is this little one which is apricot tea I'm not going to pour it directly into that yet I'll take it over to the other bench so pretty much what I'm going to do is organize everything now I'm going to do these in 100 gram batches now even though this holds about 95 grams um, I always do 100 because some's going to get stuck on the side it's not all going to come out um, I also do have my little infrared um, you know that we want to check here and of course I'm going to just tear out my scale as well so now to do this what I actually want to do I'm going to work here on an eight percent fragrance load because this one is really really good holding um, the scent as well so basically what we want to do we're going to have 92 grams of wax I've already checked that my wax is at the right temperature so generally you want it to be around you know 75 80 around that so that's you know what you go up to with this one um, and I'm just going to pour a little bit out with my cup 
because this is a very tiny one this is generally how I do all of mine um, like I said to you know in a few videos ago I don't have anything fancy that I use um, so far it's done me pretty good I think I will have to invest in something better later on but for now um, this is more than fine for me so like we said you know we've got 92 it says 91 but it's close enough to 92 and now I'm just going to double check you know the temperature let me just double check this just to make sure for our fragrance um, adding our fragrance so I'm just going to let it cool down a little bit it's saying it's around the 73 so we're going to add the fragrance at around 65 degrees Celsius so this is Celsius we're talking about I'm just going to go and put the um, lid back onto my little cooker so it's actually a slow cooker slash crock pot that I'm actually melting my wax down and I just put it on low now I'm going to be using this gorgeous one apricot tea now when I first started to bring in my apricot tea scent I really loved it but this one can't be used on the body so then I had to go and create one that was an apricot tea for the body so it's really really tricky but anyway that's what we're up to at the moment so like I said this is just a tester this is not going to be sold or anything like that so we do just need to um you know double check how it's all going to be going that one's fine I think now so now we are going to add this in like I said eight percent um so we are just going to very very slowly and one thing i have to say about these little bottles that i get from luxury candle supplies um, i don't buy a lot from them but sometimes i just like to have a couple extra things um, and i can tell you these are amazing like the the bottle seriously so good i mean if you can see that it comes out that little spout rather than it all just dripping out so to me that was amazing i absolutely loved that idea got my little spoon we're just going to give it a mix now i do also want to put a little bit of a dye in when i say dye i'm using this dye it's a powder let me just go and get a little stick i'm going to add the tiniest bit you have ever seen now this is a popsicle stick and if you can see how small it is it is literally about five gra little um, grains because I just want a very tiny bit um, I don't really want it very orange at all but just a tiny smidgen um, just to see how it's going to go I probably should have added that in before I did the fragrance but it really doesn't matter as long as it melts down and um, you know and it looks beautiful so basically this is kind of the color it's going to be if you can kind of see a tiny bit and if you want to know what it's going to be like just drip it onto your paper towel like that and that will give you a great idea what it's going to be like so you can see the color here and you can see that tiny bit it really did um, come up quite a lot so now we're just going to leave this um, to get to the right temperature we want this one to get down to a much better temperature to what it is at the moment and um, it needs to be about 55 to 60 degrees Celsius before we pour it uh, so let me just have a bit of a look um, and it's not there yet oh it is kind of there really it's you know but anyway let's just take it over to the other side and we'll pour it in now one thing I wanted to tell everyone is now I'm doing my latte one at the moment you can see I've added a little brown so this is my latte it does have a bit quite a bit of vanilla in it now as I stir it here I'm telling you it actually feels much much thicker than the other one and you can feel it when you stir it sometimes when it feels thicker it might mean that it needs a larger wick that's very very common um, you know so that's something that you may definitely notice that's how you notice um, um, you know often that the wicks have to change and things like that so now that one is done I will get on to number three so I have finished doing most of them there's just two that I haven't done yet but I am still formulating those fragrances just a tiny bit so you can see here they're all starting to solidify we're going to leave them until tomorrow and um, then I'm going to come back and show you exactly what I'm going to do don't they look colorful and a little bit fun and obviously once they're in the right containers these colors will make sense 
uh, because you know obviously they are going to um, match now to get some of these colors I have actually had to mix two different colors now to get colors like this as well you can use powdered dyes you can also use um, some dye chips some liquid dyes um, and then of course there is some liquid uh, some blocks sorry some wax blocks never use micas micas just don't work don't use food coloring crayons nothing like that um, that is not made for candles and of course you want your candle to work so uh, we need to make sure it's going to look um, beautiful but anyway like I said we're going to leave them for tomorrow we will come back and then I will talk about the wicks and why I am putting certain wicks in certain ones uh, because once you get used to candles generally you can tell uh, you know like I said earlier if it sort of starts to feel a little bit thicker when you're stirring it generally that means you're going to have to go up a wick but you know I'm, I can often be wrong it doesn't mean that I'm right um, but it's a starting point to start with your testing if that doesn't work then of course we can go to another test and melt everything down again so this is a great way to do it so that you're not wasting heaps of containers um, and um, obviously for me I make my own containers and um, you know there's a little bit of testing in that as well but like I said we're going to get going with this and the good thing is we're also going to be looking for when it melts down we're actually going to be looking to the jar that none of the sealant bubbles or anything like that um, I've never had that issue with the sealant I've been using so we will double check uh, but we just want to make sure that they don't get too hot anyway I am going to leave all of you until tomorrow morning and then we're going to come back and um, see how everything's going so here we have all the candles they have done their little job solidifying overnight and basically what I want to do is put the stick in the middle now I do have a wick centering tool which I can definitely put over that so then we can poke this through the um, wick centering tool so we're going to go and grab that and pop that in usually I do use a particular um, one that I've been buying and I'll show you the one I've been using but the hole's very small so I'd need to get a pin or something to create that hole um, because obviously they're made for the wicks to stretch through not a big kebab stick so this is the tool I'm using it's from quick wicks and they're pretty good to fit these they're just a tiny bit too big but they're not made for these ones uh, but I think they're pretty good so anyway and now I do have a little pin so basically we can just put that through here so I will show you because that's the center of it pull that out so then it's going to give me this little tiny pin prick and then I'm going to go and put the kebab stick in that it's just that that centers it a little bit better for me um, and basically all you're going to do is you've got your kebab stick we're just going to twist it um, if you do this before it is totally hard it is much easier but you can do it both ways if you force it in like I did with the caramel one that you would have seen it will actually crack the um, wax so and this is a harder wax so if you're using soy uh, be really easy you'll be able to do this straight away but this isn't this is soy but it's not a hundred percent soy it's a soy blend because I'm using m12 which I got from luxury candle supplies I'm testing this one out I just you know look I used all the natural ones which are great but um, you know I was getting a little bit fed up if I'm going to be really honest um, with you know them just not withstanding what I wanted especially with people in a store uh, because you know your natural ones are great but they're not going to sit on the shelf for months and months they'll discolor and no matter what I did with them so anyway I'm testing another wax to see what I think um, and now these are the little um, this is basically a wick I've cut it in half because you know you don't need a full one in here you can cut it in half and then basically all we're going to do is just wiggle this down um, into the candle it will go into the bottom I'll just have to wiggle more and then trim it off obviously obviously that's not enough let me just get my kebab stick and we will wiggle this a little bit further down um, and I know it does look off center to the camera but it's not it's actually centered because I was thinking to myself is that off center but it's not it's fine 
um, and that's the thing you know you just got to burn these candles everyone test them see what we think yeah I think that's a bit better isn't it um, anyway and you know so then basically you can just push this down if you want or you can get a heat gun but like I said this is not for sale this is for me to test then we're going to just give it a bit of a trim I'll just use a pair of scissors and be lazy um, anyway and um, we will test this one after I'll I'll just um, trim that down a little bit more and um, yeah so literally this is what I'm going to do I'm going to use the sheet that I've got now also now this is a coconut berry this does not have vanilla in it so this I'm still using the same wick that I used in the vanilla but I am pretty sure this wick is going to be too big and I'm going to have to go down because like I said a lot of the vanilla or thicker ones um, they definitely will need to be wicked up and some of them that don't have vanilla in it will need to be wicked down I know my vanilla tea I'm pretty positive that one and um, my seaside waves I'm pretty sure both of those are going to have to have a smaller wick um, and I do have a couple smaller wicks, but I do need to get one more from Pure Candles. So I will order that one uh, before I do the testing on them. But they can sit for a few days um, anyway. And this one, look, I'm actually really keen to see how this is. This is my new scent called Licorice Rose. Um, and it's kind of like a real red, rich rose um, with that licorice but it's like a lolly licorice so it has a bit of a sugary licorice but anyway i think that one is going to be a big seller because it's very nice but um of course these don't smell that great yet because they do need another day this one smells delish which is apricot tea very strong um and of course you know these are only made not even 24 hours ago so they would definitely get their um scent a little bit more but um they're still smelling quite strong they came in here and was knocked out by the smell this morning because uh, my studio is not within my house it sits on its own on my property anyway I hope you have enjoyed this let's spin the camera around so that you can see these two ones burning and now can you see how high this flame is it's really high that's too high for a flame so we might have to go back to the drawing board and have a bit of a, a look sometimes what you can do is blow that out trim the wick and see if that wick works trimmed um, but you know can I tell you I've been in many friends homes many people that I know um, they might have my candles or someone else's candles they're not always mine um, and I often see flames bigger than this so and that's on even really expensive candles so um you know a lot of candles aren't tested that well but can you see how this flame is really good it's not fighting to stay alive it's not flickering this one's dancing a lot flickering so that's usually a good indicator that it's not the right one whereas this one is just you know slow and steady so i think this is going to be a really good wick uh for this particular one and these jars uh, are, I think they're about 5.4 centimeters um, across in depth and this particular wick says it will go up to you know a six centimeter width uh, but just because it says that doesn't mean it's going to work on every one like I said you've got to test it again and but this I'm really happy with this flame it's only slowly doing its melt pool that's what you want you don't want a melt pool that is super strong because um, if the melt pool is really really big fast what actually happens Happens is then it can um, compensate the jar like it basically means then um, uh, compromise the jar I should say the jar can get way too hot and it can crack so it's really important and also it's important to use jars that can take the heat this particular um, stone that I use is actually heat resistant so that's why I use this one you have to be careful when you're using um, different products um, as well so don't go to your local department store get a jar and fill it up with wax that is not the right thing to do it needs to be a proper candle jar that's um, you know suitable for the heat of candles anyway i hope you've enjoyed today and it's been a little bit of insight so i will see you lovelies on the next video don't forget to give me a thumbs up and join me at patreon if you'd like to come over there see you next time bye